Dr. Colden, this man's condition is deteriorating. What says Dr. Fuller? It's his patient, after all. He... he's busy with Captain Fitzroy. He specifically asked us not to bother him when that's the case. Oh, of course. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Blake, can you hear me? I'm Dr. Colden. We'll take care of you. There's nothing we can do. I tried talking to him. He's catatonic. Very well. I'll examine him. His skin shows abnormal loss of color and seems dried out. He's totally dehydrated. His fingertips and toes seem to feature a slight ring under the skin, tender at the touch, slightly sticky. Severe malnutrition. Swollen abdomen with traces of petechia. <sighs> Doesn't seem like an edema. Slight protuberances seem to indicate the presence of a foreign body. 30-year-old subject. Severe hypothermia. Erythematous papules around the eyes and eardrums. Necrosed palubral tissue. Lord, this smell. So, doctor, an opinion? I'm not sure I have the necessary knowledge to treat this man. Don't say that. You're our most worthy doctor, after Dr. Fuller. Some of his symptoms are beyond my comprehension. What did you find? Did you examine his abdomen? It would seem there's something inside. He hasn't eaten in days. Are you certain it's not an edema? No. Can't you recognize an edema? Pushing with your finger won't leave a trace. And look at these bumps. <laughs> it's not like he could be pregnant. Whatever it is, this man has something inside him that shouldn't be there. We should operate on him at once. Dr. Fuller said not to worry, that the edema would go away by itself. You know, I'm not sure Dr. Fuller is telling the truth. I see signs of hypodermoclysis, but he's still dehydrated. When was his last IV? He's constantly under perfusion. I've even gone beyond the recommended dose to no avail. And you won't believe me, but... When we bathed him earlier... He seemed to feel better? Yes. Like he needs an aquarium, not a perfusion. But that doesn't explain his condition. In spite of the muscle contractions, his arms seem limp. Yes. They can't have decalcified, not at this rate. And yet, if there is a bone in this arm, it's softer than that of a newborn baby. What about his cranium? It's soft at the touch. It does seem like the skull of a baby. Look at these sticky rings growing at his fingertips. What can be happening? I'm sure you'll find an explanation. You have to. I almost don't believe it myself, but these symptoms are not those usually associated with the human species. What do you mean? Don't tell me you believe in extraterrestrials. No. This poor man is from our world, all right. But his body is undergoing unnatural mutations. And this transformation is killing him. His body simply can't cope. Where could he have gotten such an infection? I pray that it's not here. Dr. Colden, may I know what you're doing to my patient? What I'm doing? How about what you've done to him? Let us calm down, my dear Marie. I don't appreciate your tone, nor your insinuations. I've done to him what I do to all my patients. Provide him with the best available care. Your imagination is without limit. It's your homemade drug again, is it not? Those people are not your guinea pigs. There, there. What have you seen to put you in such a state? These are alarming symptoms. If we don't act, he'll die. 
Do you believe that? I'm not as convinced, you see. I even think this man has a strong chance of completely healing from his ailments. No, Doctor. This patient isn't himself anymore. He's dying. Really? What do you mean by isn't himself? He's changing. His physical characteristics, they are more animal than human now. Fascinating. An animal, you say? Could you be more precise? Cephalopod, perhaps? <sighs> this amuses you. Your reaction does. I know your thirst for knowledge, Doctor. It's your innocent worries for this man that have you overreacting. For this man, and the others whose medical files you've been hiding. I have to protect my discovery. These people owe me their life, but the world isn't ready yet. It will be, in time. I will not let you do this. You disappoint me, Marie, but I still have hope you'll one day share my point of view. In the meantime, take care of your own patience and try not to forget who you're dealing with. Was that a threat? What did he mean? It was a warning. Dr. Fuller is this institution's founder and one of our profession's most influential voices. My word is of no weight against his. If I continue to protest, I will only ruin my reputation and career. It's scandalous. Can't we do anything? Is there no evidence of his crimes? I disapprove of Fuller's methods, but his treatments have saved more lives than I can count. And Mr. Blake? You said yourself he was dying. I don't know what to think for now. What I'm sure of is that Fuller is hiding something from us. And I need to know what that is before I take a chance exposing him. And where would you find those? In his office? What if you get caught? I'd rather not think about that. I'm counting on your discretion. Of course, Doctor. You can count on me. I'll keep Mum. This place draws you in and never lets you go. Elizabeth? You all right? Why is this room in such a state? Because, as always, I'm cleaning it by myself. And the water was once again shut off this morning. I had to bother Mrs. Donovan again, giving her a new excuse to belittle me. Come now. Don't let that witch sap your morale. We're lacking in qualified personnel and she knows it. Her petty punishments won't last forever. I'm trying, Doctor. I'm trying. It's just that sometimes I imagine she shuts down the water herself just for the pleasure of harassing me. <sighs> Her time is much too precious for these kind of petty games. Anyway, I've learned my lesson. I'll hold my tongue next time. Courage, Elizabeth. Thank you, Doctor.
have little time for you, Doctor. You'll find out that it's not only the doctors who have things to do. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Dr. Colton. Mrs. Donovan. Nobody goes into Dr. Fuller's office. But rest assured, I'll tell him you came by. That won't be necessary. Thank you. I will tell him, nonetheless. Let's hope I can go through the administration office. Everybody says it. She's a witch, an old hag. I didn't make this up. And I'm the one who pays. What a pest. It's so unfair. The door to the boiler room is locked. I have to get the key if I wish to get rid of Donovan. No, you're pulling my leg. I'm not joking. I saw the schedule. She's alone in the bathroom. The doses prescribed by Fuller are far too high. Again? And she still says nothing to that old witch, Donovan? Oh, listen to the way you talk, you naughty girl. And the answer is no. You can imagine that she doesn't dare. We've stand been waiting it. to be restocked for weeks. Let herself be trodden on. Oh well, at least we won't have to clean for a while. And just wait and see the next time the water's cut off. It's a real show. Watch out for the water, Doctor. Patients and hospital personnel eat the same food. <laughs> Gentlemen, may I help you? We're waiting on news regarding our mother, Maureen Harding. She came in with a kidney problem, but we haven't heard anything since. I'm sorry. Dr. Fuller is a very busy man. Well, is there anyone else who can tell us what's going on? She's our only family, you know. And we can't even see her medical file. Don't worry. I'm aware our institution is not always welcoming. But your mother is in good hands. I'll tend to her myself and keep you informed at once. Would that suit you? Well, that sure sounds great to us, Doctor. Thank you. But those are just words, so we're not budging. Very well. At least I'll know where to find you. <laughs> Doctor, please. Uh, my chest. Oh. He broke his back in an accident down by the docks. Ah. Wailing station. What's wrong with me? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, Doctor, is that you? Yes, it's Dr. Colden. Tell me what happened. It's the old whaling station. See? What did you see there? Nothing. Nothing at all. The floor was all rotten and I fell straight through. And that's how you broke your back? Perhaps. No idea. Passed out. Dr. Colden? Hello, Betty. I'm looking for the key to the boiler room. What for? To put it in its place. Perhaps I should do the same with you. 
I beg your pardon? I suspect you of having a little too much fun at Elizabeth's expense. But be warned, it could easily be you they will all be laughing at tomorrow. You are right, Doctor. The, the, the key is in the dormitory office in, in Block B. Thank you. I shall go fetch it. Ah, oh, so there's Harding. She's still sleeping. Given her file, a nephrectomy would have been inevitable. But Fuller was able to save her kidney. The key to the boiler room. All I have to do is shut off the water and hope Donovan takes the bait. Another insomniac. I should find the cause for such a widespread trouble. Dr. Colden, do you want something? This man, Edward Pierce, his file is incomplete. What did Fuller do to him? Dr. Colden, we need you at once in Dormitory B. What is the problem? Mr. Evans seems to be having trouble with his IV. I'll see to it right away. And the family of Mrs. Harding is asking to see her medical file. I'll never understand why it's so hard to see patients' files around here. Rules are rules. See, with Dr. Fuller, he's in charge. Anyhow, they're still waiting, and I don't think they'll leave until they get what they want. Understood. Anything else? As a matter of fact, yes. A man has been brought up from the basement. Oh. What state is he in now? You should go see for yourself, Doctor. Dr. Fuller always keeps his key with him. In theory, this is where we hang the key to the boiler room. Doctor, those people need you at the dormitory. I'll tend to it. Don't worry. Dr. Colden, here you are at last. This patient was again brought up to the psychiatric wing. We've been following the treatment you prescribed, but the dyskusia persists and he's lost a great deal of weight. We haven't been able to move him. The stress makes him hyperallergic. Sir, I am going to examine you. Do you understand? Inject him with a dose of pentobarbital, intramuscular, so that I can conduct the clinical examination. He bit his lips so much, they're still bleeding. White froth. Evidently because of such drooling. His binds left bloody wounds. So, Doctor, what should we do with this patient? Those basement brutes tied him up too tight and now he's hurt. I keep trying to heal his wounds, but he reopens them. Do you have a diploma as a nurse? Excuse me? So take care of this man. So, Doctor, have you been able to examine our mother? I've tended to her, and I have good news. Her blood analysis is reassuring. Her kidneys are as new. Are you talking about the same person? This is miraculous. She's still recovering, but you may speak to her upon her awakening. Oh, thank you so much, Doctor. We'll wait for her to wake up. We've been here since this morning, so it won't make a difference.
I can't shut this with my bare hands. I need a tool. fiance go I hope those nutcases will stop burdening her with work I feel guilty about Elizabeth, but I need the diversion. Dr. Colden, might there be a problem with the water? I was about to mention it. It seems it's been cut off yet again. I can't take this, Marie. I feel I'm gonna burst. It's not your fault if we have defective plumbing. And yet, I'm the one who gets punished because I'm gonna have to square off with that annoying old witch. Courage, Elizabeth. Here we go. And hold your tongue this time. files must be hidden here. I should go another way. This is where Fuller found his diagnosis for Francis Sanders.
Something is wrong with these masts. It's some sort of puzzle. I've unlocked something. Patient files. I was right. Conclusions. Session number 17. Patient? Sarah Hawkins. The patient appears to have finally accepted the illusory nature of what she calls the mythos. It goes without saying that these peculiar delusions are the price of the This finger belonged to a woman. Minutes. Why keep it here? Why does Dr. Fuller write psychological reports about Sarah Hawkins? At first, I presumed that her blood was the key. But I found nothing to explain Mrs. Hawkins' abilities. Is Ethan on medication? The poor souls downstairs are not Fuller's only subjects. Then James came. I read that Charles was keeping secrets from him. I presume that he will try to break into the basement sooner or later. Hawkins, Fitzroy, and Fuller. What is the connection between these three? It's fortunate that I had the presence of mind to set the all in the basement. When all the fuss about the Hawkins incident finally comes to an end, I will dispose of her belongings. In the meantime, they must remain hidden in plain sight. Hawkins is the connection. I must go back to the basement.
There's no way I'm leaving until I find what Fuller is hiding. I think that you're needed in Block B, Doctor. Doctor Colden? Mrs. Sanders? Why did nobody tell me about her admission? His perfusion of a semi-physiological solution doesn't seem to work. He's undergoing a ventricular fibrillation. Nurse? Deborah, come and help me, please. His potassium level is too high. Replace it with 2% glucose solution with insulin, calcium, and sodium bicarbonate. I'll tend to it right away. Thank you. He's in your hands. Dr. Colden? Hay fever? What's he doing here? That's the Marie that I know. I knew I could count on your scientific curiosity. It's time to show you what you were so eager to discover. If you're gonna shoot me, at least have the decency to look me in the eyes. Turn around. Slowly. Talk, filthy thief! Oh, I swear I'll shoot! Take a minute to look around. Everything points to Charles Hawkins. He's dead! No. He was here for a very specific item. Oh, no. The book. Why was it in the safe? Have you read it? Answer the question. How foolish of you. Now you won't be able to escape his will. What did it show you? She went into Fuller's office. She was looking for Sarah Hawkins' corpse. Sarah Hawkins, you say? Let's go back to the start, shall we? Whose life did the Necronomicon choose to show you? Dr. Colden. She was at the Riverside Institute. 
She's in danger. I have to go. Wait! No one knows the occult better than me. You might need my help. All right. All right. I might need you after all. Perfect. Let's meet later at the Hawkins Mansion. Now go! Rescue the Doctor! Thank you, Drake.